Hey, what's up? Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV. So right after my first impressions video of all of the iPhone 13 lineup, I did a poll on my YouTube community tab and the top two requests came in the form of the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the iPhone 13 Pro as the first video review that you would like for me to do an in-depth review. So because of this, I thought of segregating these iPhone reviews into two parts. One is for the Pro lineup of the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the other video review that is coming really soon will be based on the video on the consumer lineup which is the iPhone 13 mini and the iPhone 13. So in this video, let's take a look at the Pro line of smartphones for the iPhone 13 to find out which Pro that you should go with. Now starting from the specs, both phones comes with Apple's A15 Bionic 5nm chipset with Apple's very own 5-core GPU and all of the variant has 6GB of RAM and you can choose between 128, 256, 512 and 1TB of storage. And in case you did not know that all iPhones, even going back to the iPhone 7, uses an NVMe type of storage which no other smartphone in the market uses. Because not only that NVMe storage is really expensive if you go out and buy one, but it has amazingly fast speeds. So if you ever wondered why iPhones were expensive, well, take that into account. Then when it comes to the software, it comes shipped with iOS 15, but as of the recording of this video, it is at the latest version 15.1. Now, in terms of the usability of using both phones daily, if you are coming from the iPhone 11 or before that, you'll find that the phone feels really solid and grips into your hands. And while initially some mentioned about how the squared off edges cuts their hand and all, that is pure nonsense as there weren't any such issues. Now in terms of the differences between the Pro and the Pro Max, yes, you will find the Pro to be more comfortable to hold if you have a medium size to small hands. But personally for me, I kind of always liked a bigger screen phone and always use them. So going from the iPhone 13 to this Pro was an easy transition. And there were also some who mentioned about how the iPhone 13 Pro Max was a bit heavy, which in my humble opinion, using it daily, I did not think it was. Yes, on paper, it does seem like a very heavy device. But for me, I feel that is very subjective depending on your usage. So I would suggest for you to head to your nearest Apple authorized store, sanitize your hands first, and then feel how it is in your hands to know whether this is right for you. Because once again, for me, it was perfectly fine and I love the overall build of the Pro Max and the Pro as well. Now, another thing to note is that while you can typically put on a skin to cover the finish, I am personally not a fan of doing so. And it's nice that this Pro variant, both the Pro Max and the Pro, does come with a matte finish and the sides are made of stainless steel where it is very shiny to the point where people will know that you're using a brand new smartphone so you can flex your new smartphone just like how my buddy Jay is from Lens Library did when he got the Sierra Blue color. Now speaking of colors, the Pro variant that I'm reviewing is in gold and the Pro Max is in my personal favorite color which is silver which looks more in a white color finish. Ah, the displays. Now what's interesting is that every iPhone 13 lineup has the same display type which uses the Super Retina XDR OLED display with Dolby Vision but you'll find a tiny bit of a difference in the screen resolution just on paper where you won't really see it in real life to be honest where the Pro has 1170 by 2532 pixels where the Pro Max has 1284 by 2778 pixels due to the larger screen of course. But of course where this Pro lineup differs from the non-Pro variant is the ProMotion 120Hz adaptive refresh rate that adjusts from 10Hz to 120Hz which adapts to your usage hence saving battery which I'll go into later about the battery life when using both phones daily. 
Now, because of this ProMotion display, here's where I would totally recommend going for the Pro lineup because Apple does it superbly well as they did it with the iPad Pro as well. Now with this, it had such a great experience when using the phone daily, especially when it comes to the brightness as it has a peak brightness up to 1200 nits. Where in these shots you can see over here was taken on a super bright daylight even with an ND filter on and yet the phone screen was really visible. So yes, it does make it perfect whether or not it's typically multitasking, watching videos and of course gaming, which I'll also go into the gaming performance later on in this video. Now speaking of video playback, as mentioned in my first impressions video, it is extremely nice to have Dolby Vision on Netflix. The colours were super accurate and pleasing to the eye and here's where if you consume more movies and videos on the phone, you might want to consider getting the Pro Max as it has a better viewing pleasure on the screen. But that goes without saying that the Pro was not as good. But in this case, since the screen is bigger, it would give you a nicer experience. Now, as for the Bose phone's cameras, it is the same where the main lens is a 12 megapixel f1.5 aperture, 26 mm wide lens, a 12 megapixel f2.8 77 mm telephoto lens with three times optical zoom, a 12 megapixel f1.8 13 mm ultra wide lens, and a lidar sensor. Then the front camera has a 12 megapixel f2.8 23 mm lens. Now starting from the ultra wide lens, the image quality was really great and very consistent in terms of the quality and dynamic HDR details with absolutely no barrel distortion at the sides. And this ultra wide lens is overall my top two favorite ultra wide lenses on any smartphones. Then as for the main lens, the dynamic range and the amount of details was really good with very accurate colors, which was something that I preferred as flagship smartphones these days tend to oversaturate the colors for the sake of making the images more vibrant per se. But that was not the case when it comes to the lens over here. So one of the many software features on all of the iPhones are this new feature called the photographic styles, which is like picture profiles that you'd find on a mirrorless cameras, where in the camera app itself, there are five different presets that you can choose from between standard, rich contrast, vibrant, warm, and cool. And of course, within all of the modes, you can adjust the tone and the warmth further if you want to. Then as for the telephoto lens, it was high in quality just like the main lens where there was almost no noise in the image which other smartphones tend to have on their telephoto lenses and while it may not have a crazy amount of zoom range, I prefer something which is more usable and the photos on the telephoto lens were as flagship quality as it should be. Looking at the portrait mode, what's interesting is that you can use the rear portrait mode for two situations. One is the one times portrait and the three times portrait mode, which uses the main and also the telephoto lens. And with this, it does give you more versatile options to change between both of the focal lengths. Then as for the quality, as usual, the subject to background blur is one of the best in the smartphone industry with perfect colors and skin tones for human subjects as well. Then as for the macro mode, yes, Apple is a little late on bringing macro capabilities on their phones as this feature is something to be a very high favorite for many and there is a real good reason for it because once Apple brings in a new feature in their cameras or any single features in their software or hardware, they do a freaking good job at it. Because the macro shots on the phone is the best macro shots that I've seen on any smartphones that I have recently tested. Not only focusing was super easy, but there were no color shift issues, no over sharpening. But these issues which I just mentioned happens most of the time on other macro smartphone lenses and taking these shots that you see over here was super effortless since it has a very close focal distance and a great autofocus of only 2cm. 
And knowing the fact that it converts from the ultra wide lens to this macro mode is also something really sweet instead of typically having a dedicated macro lens on some of the other phones. Also, just so you all know, with the iOS 15.1 update, there is now a toggle to turn off the automatic switching of the macro mode in the camera settings for those who prefer situations if you like to turn it off to take a closer ultra wide shot. Now, as for taking photos at night, you can choose between taking auto night mode shots or turning it off altogether. And with it turned on, I just love how the shots look very natural true to life and sharp at the same time. The skies were nice and black and not too bluish, which some night mode smartphone cameras are, and there were no noticeable noise in the shadows, whether or not you're taking night shots on the ultra wide lens or the main lens. Then as for the selfie photos, looking at the regular selfie shots, skin tones and the amount of exposure control was definitely one of the best that I've seen. And it's surely one of the great points when it comes to a point and shoot selfie image without waiting for the right amount of light and angle to take a perfect shot which is usually the case for most smartphones now the portrait selfie is still one of the best in the smartphone industry once again effortless photo taking with amazing subject to background blur now as for video recording both the rear and the front camera can record up to 4k 60 frames per second and the video quality was really great as how iphone has always been for the ultra wide lenses, the main lens, and even the telephoto lens, especially since there is OIS for it as well. Now, the overall image stabilization was very natural and not too gimbal like, and had a more raw movement instead, which was very subjective based on what exactly that you like, but I kind of like the overall natural look instead. Then of course, there's a new cinematic mode, which is an amazing implementation of the camera software from a video's perspective. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking that this cinematic mode is more like just giving a proper subject to background blur or the portrait video mode because it has some really intelligent modes within this cinematic mode like focus tracking and changing focus on the other person or a subject automatically or manually by just touching the screen. Now the focus breathing during this mode was super seamless as well which even some expensive mirrorless cameras cannot achieve this amount of focus racking especially when it comes to the smoothness of the focus and what's super extra cool is that if you feel you got the timing of the focus or the subject focus wrong you can always edit it later on the phone's camera app or even with the latest update of final cut pro 10 as well and the videos on the front cameras are hands down the best <laughs> that I've ever tested on any smartphone because the dynamic range was crazy good to a point that it didn't even overexpose. When I pointed directly towards the sun, which was totally mind blowing. And of course, the image stabilization was really good as expected for the front cameras on any iPhones. Then finally, as of the iOS 15.1 update, ProRes video is here where you'll need to first toggle that in the settings as well and also in the camera app. And since the update came very close to me publishing this video, I did some very quick test shots and the video looked really great. And it can record up to 4K 30 frames per second or even 24 frames per second as well and had very great dynamic range as expected, which is really mind blowing to know as I'm looking to use this shots more for outdoor situations as well moving forward for my youtube videos and if you're like me who is excited for this be sure to get the highest storage variant anything above 256 gigabytes version due to the hardware limitation of space to get up to 4k 30 frames per second Now, as for the phone speakers, the stereo speakers are available across the board for all of the iPhone 13 lineup once again. Now, when it comes to the sound quality, the highs for the vocals and other high frequency notes within the music was perfectly balanced and the bass produced for both of the phones, specifically for the Pro and the Pro Max was already nicely pronounced and you can feel the bass where overall it is definitely one of the best sounding speakers on a smartphone. But because the Pro Max has a larger build quality, obviously the output was also better as you can hear a significant difference not only for the overall volume but the vocal clarity and the bass as well. But here is a quick sound test for each.
Now as for the phone's battery, looking at the iPhone 13 Pro, it comes with 3095 mAh of battery and the iPhone 13 Pro Max comes with a massive 4352 mAh of battery. Now in this case, in case you didn't know that the battery size of any iPhones is totally not comparable with the likes of other smartphones because of the amazing efficiency of the A15 Bionic chipset. So don't even bother trying to compare the numbers of the battery size against any non-iPhones. During the keynote presentation, Apple has mentioned about how they have increased the space inside of the phone to accommodate a bigger battery where there was a total of one and a half hours battery more on the Pro and two and a half hours on the Pro Max compared to the previous models. And based on my test using both phones daily, as mentioned, I almost abused the Pro Max screen more due to the larger screen and it gave me an average of close to 8.5 hours of screen on time when I was at 10% battery with dark mode turned on. And as for the iPhone 13 Pro, it gave me about 8 hours and 15 minutes, sometimes a little more, of battery life with the same 10% and dark mode toggled on. Now this is still very subjective towards how you really use the phone because I believe I am quite a heavy user since my work always needs me to be at my phone at all times. So I'm very certain that you will be able to get more battery life on each of the phones. Because I did find that I could get an average of one and a half days during a very heavy usage, especially it was pretty consistent on that amount of time on the iPhone 13 Pro Max for me. Now in terms of the fast charging, there was no official mention on this but based on my research, you can get fast charging up to 27 watts on the iPhone 13 Pro Max and 23 watts of fast charging on the iPhone 13 Pro. And of course, there's also MagSafe wireless charging up to 15 watts and Qi wireless charging up to 7.5 watts. Now, as for software, I personally really enjoyed my experience with iOS 15 ever since it was updated from version 14, where we have already seen version 15.1 already coming to the iPhones. Now, so far, I never come across any bugs or any issues using the phone daily and the software stability has always been one of the biggest reasons why iPhones are the number one selling smartphone in the world because of how great and simple and clean that their softwares are. Now, in case you missed my video on what I love or what we love about the iOS 15 together with t where we have mentioned about all of the favorite features and while there are many great updates, my top features that I really cannot live without is the focus mode where it allows certain notifications based on when I'm working. And honestly, this seems like a feature which is like, okay, that's cool. But guys, when you try it, you are totally going to get hooked into this focus mode. Now, Spotlight Search is also something that I found very useful just to swipe down anywhere in the middle of the screen to find literally anything at any point of time. And finally, Smarter Notification where it groups the notification from the same app. And one might argue that the group notification is already available on Android for years. But once again, the iOS has perfected it. Because I love how when it's grouped, you can just touch it once where it expands a whole list of the notification without even specifically selecting it. So for example, if I see a bunch of notification coming from YouTube and then I can choose which exact video that I would like to check out first. And SharePlay is finally here with the latest 15.1 iOS update and it allows integration with apps like Apple Music and Apple TV Plus or even more coming soon where there are great features like sharing music or even watching a show together on FaceTime. Now as for gaming, both of the Pro models has 5 core GPU graphics compared to 4 cores on the non-Pro variant. Now since the 5 core GPU is the fastest GPU on any smartphone out right now, I decided to really take the gaming potential on the phones to its limits. As usual, I began my testing with the high-intensive Genshin Impact. And what's super sweet is that the game just recently enabled 120Hz on the iPhone 13 Pros. And oh god almighty, the experience was buttery smooth and the closest rival to the gaming experience on Genshin Impact was actually the iPad Pro and that actually ran the M1 chipset. 
And when you are at the high 120Hz setting, if you play games for a really long hour, it does become warm but never hot to the touch as it ran cool all the way if it adjusts to a lower setting. Now another cool thing is that compared to other flagship devices that I've tested, the map loads way faster when teleporting within the map as well. And this is definitely due to the chipset and of course, the NVMe storage as well. Now the sound coming out from the speakers during gaming was really nice and loud and properly separated, which was more even apparent on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Then as for PUBG Mobile, this game as usual is still one of the most optimized games for any smartphone, so it obviously ran perfect, where the game ran very smoothly at graphics set to Ultra HD and frame rate set to Extreme. Then finally, I tried Gear Club since it is optimized for a higher frame rate gaming and it felt really great as though I was gaming on a console with this kind of a high frame rate. So in conclusion, Apple continues to give us a very powerful and a pro smartphone to showcase what they are and always have been great at. Now my biggest takeaway for this pro lineup is the superior build quality, amazing camera and gaming performance, especially with the high quality ProMotion display and a really improved battery. Now when it comes to the pro variant on which that you should choose, there's no right or wrong answer on whether or not you should choose the iPhone 13 Pro or the iPhone 13 Pro Max. For me, I would still prefer to go with the iPhone 13 Pro Max simply because of the size of the screen as I watch lots of videos especially when I'm doing my cardio sessions in the gym in between my work with the loudspeakers played on the phone and of course the battery life was something that I felt was a huge blessing since I am quite a heavy user. But who cares what I think, what matters more is what you think. So do let me know which one is your preferred Pro iPhone, the iPhone 13 Pro or the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Let me know at the comment section below. Now don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so as my upcoming video will be based on covering the consumer lineup of the iPhone 13 series which is the mini and the regular iPhone 13. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll see you in my next video.